Welcome to Medical Dialogues Journal Club. Today we are going to review an important drug that is amylodipine, which is the preferred treatment of choice for the most common disease of hypertension. Hypertension is a long-term medical condition in which the blood pressure in the arteries is persistently elevated. Now, high blood pressure usually does not cause symptoms. And long-term high blood pressure, however, is a major risk factor for stroke, coronary artery disease, heart failure, atrial fibrillation, peripheral arterial disease, vision loss, chronic kidney disease, and even dementia. Lifestyle changes and medications can lower blood pressure and even decrease the risk of health complications. Lifestyle changes include weight loss, physical exercise, decreased salt intake, reducing the alcohol intake, and even a healthy diet. If lifestyle changes are not sufficient, then blood pressure medications are definitely to be used. A combination of up to three medications taken concurrently can control blood pressure in 90% of the cases. The treatment of moderately high arterial blood pressure with medications is associated with an improved life expectancy. Several classes of medications, collectively referred to as antihypertensive medications, are available for treating hypertension. The World Health Organization has released guidelines for the pharmacological treatment of hypertension in adults in 2021. They have stated the recommendations on drug classes to be used as first-line agents. For adults with hypertension requiring pharmacological treatment, WHO recommends the use of drugs from any of the following three classes of pharmacological antihypertensive medications as an initial treatment. First, thiazide and thiazide-like agents. Second, angiotensin-converting enzyme inhibitors or angiotensin receptor blockers. Third, long-acting dihydropyridine calcium channel blockers. Calcium channel blockers initially introduced over three decades ago for coronary heart disease are now widely known and used for their efficacy in hypertension. Calcium channel blockers demonstrate significant blood pressure reduction across all patient groups, irrespective of sex, race, ethnicity, age, and dietary sodium intake. Thus, they are among the medication classes noted to be the first-line therapy for the treatment of primary hypertension. Amlodipine has many unique qualities. It is a long-acting calcium channel blocker, effective for 24 hours blood pressure control, and cause minimal blood pressure variability, thus setting it apart from other agents in this class. Amlodipine is an oral calcium channel blocker used for treatment of various conditions including hypertension, chronic stable angina pectoris, and Prince Metals variant angina. Amlodipine is a potent peripheral vasodilator similar to nifedipine and other members of the dihydropyridine class. Although amlodipine has the longest half-life of the group, thus allowing once daily dosing. Now discussing about its detailed mechanism of action, amlodipine it inhibits the influx of extracellular calcium across the myocardial and the vascular smooth muscle cell membranes and the serum calcium levels in this process remain unchanged. Amlodipine inhibits this influx and the resultant decrease in intracellular calcium. It inhibits the contractile processes of the myocardial smooth muscle cells, resulting in dilation of the coronary and the systemic arteries. As with the other calcium channel blockers of the dihydropyridine class, amlodipine exerts its effects mainly on the arterial vasculature. It has no significant effect as seen on the sinus node function or even the cardiac conduction, nor does it possess any negative inotropic effects at the clinical dosage level. Because it has been considered a gradual onset, reflex tachycardia does not occur and a side effect that is quite common with other peripheral vasodilators. Amlodipine therapy usually does not affect hemodynamic parameters in patients with normal ventricular function and it also reduces coronary vascular resistance and increases the coronary blood flow. These actions, on a contrary, they increase the oxygen delivery to the myocardial tissue and this oxygen consumption is hence reduced. 
Thus, amlodipine's beneficial effects in the treatment of angina are a result of multiple actions. In general, if I talk about it, calcium channel blockers, they exert favorable effects on the LVH and do not worsen the insulin resistance or even exert detrimental effects on the lipid profile. The drug is administered orally. Amlodipine is approximately 93% bound to plasma proteins. Amlodipine is extensively metabolized to inactive compounds by liver with 10% of the parent compound and 60% of the inactive metabolites excreted in the urine. The terminal half-life is about 30 to 50 hours. The steady state plasma concentration of amlodipine are reached after 7 to 8 days of consecutive daily dosing. Several trials have evaluated the antihypertensive efficacy of amlodipine as monotherapy versus other agents like angiotensin receptor blockers, diuretics and even the ACE inhibitors. One such trial is the Alhart trial which is the antihypertensive lipid lowering treatment to prevent heart attack. The trial enrolled over 33,000 patients with hypertension and one CHD risk factor. The objective of the Alhart trial was to determine if the incidence of CHD or other cardiovascular diseases is lower in patients treated with a diuretic, a calcium channel blocker or an ACE inhibitor. The patients were randomized to lisonopril, chlorthalidone or amlodipine with a mean follow-up done for up to 4.9 years. The trial demonstrated that amlodipine can be recommended as a first-line agent in the treatment of hypertension since it was neither superior nor inferior as compared to an ACE inhibitor or thiazide diuretics in managing hypertension in patients with other comorbid conditions as well. While the VALUE trial, which is the Valsartan Antihypertensive Long-Term Use Evaluation Trial, was a large, landomized, double-blind, parallel group comparison of therapy based on Valsartan or amlodipine that enrolled close to 15,000 patients greater than 50 years of age who had either controlled or uncontrolled hypertension and was at a greater risk for any cardiovascular events. The study aimed to test the benefits of Valsartan as compared to amlodipine in reducing the cardiovascular morbidity and even the mortality in patients with hypertension who were at a greater risk for cardiovascular events. And the results of this particular trial showed that both monotherapy groups improved their blood pressure in similar ways, although the effects of amlodipine-based regimens were more obvious. Now, the next evidence that I'm quoting is the Camelot trial, which aimed to compare the effects of amlodipine or enlalapril versus placebo on cardiovascular events in patients with coronary artery disease. The trial that I'm talking about was a double-blind, randomized, multi-center 24-month trial which compared amlodipine or enlalapril with placebo in close to 2,000 patients. The patients in the trial were randomized to receive either amlodipine which was a 10 mg or enlarpril 20 mg or categorized into the placebo group. It was demonstrated that the administration of amlodipine to patients with coronary artery disease and normal blood pressure resulted in reduced rather marked reduction in adverse cardiovascular events. Apart from controlling hypertension alone, or in combination with other drugs, it is also used in treating chronic angina pectoris, coronary artery disease, or with or without hypertension, and variant angina. Amlodipine therapy is generally well tolerated at doses of up to 10 mg per day. Most of the reported reactions are mild to moderate in severity and related to the drug's peripheral vasodilatory effect. Amlodipine with other drugs that is ACE inhibitors and diuretics in adequate doses can be extremely useful for these patients. So colleagues, we all know that hypertension remains one of the most commonest illnesses which is treated yet not adequately treated. Reaching and rather remaining in a target blood pressure range still remains a challenge even today. That's all for today. Stay tuned to Medical Dialogues for latest updates. Never miss a medical update from Medical Dialogues. Like, subscribe and press the bell icon.